What's up, ladies and gentlemen? You on the first episode, yes indeed, episode one of Beard, Beer, and Sports. We call it that shit because I don't feel like uh, shaving my beard. <laughs> and I want to drink beer and talk shit about sports. And there's a lot of interesting and nonsensical things that happened in 2017. And I'm certain we're going to get into some more of it in 2018. So I ain't, ain't no surprises, pretty much. Uh, if you were offended or overly sensitive in 2017, it's going to be a long ass 2018. Don't let your kids listen to this. I curse a lot. Picked up that habit in the military. Dig this. The first thing I want to get into, and y'all could y'all could reach out, comment in the comments, share your opinion about this. There's some things that that we can't really take with us in 2018. Can I be honest about that? Okay, like number one, Livingston headbutt referees. We cannot keep headbutt referees, Livingston. Not when your head is like that. You don't have a regular head. That probably hurt that ref. He's just a regular person with a regular people head. You got a Livingston head, pointy head. Pillow head. Like it was an abnormal head. It's not like a regular person's head head bun. It was very awkward. You could tell by the ref that he was like, this man got a body pillow size head that feels like a truck that hit me and I don't like it. But anyway, the big deal about that, if we get technical sports wise, what I didn't like about it was it appeared to be an accident that everybody made to be bigger than what it actually was. The ref came towards him a little bit. Livingston came toward the ref a little bit, and so they butted heads. That's all it really was. I don't think there was anything intentional or malicious about it. The problem, though, really is NBA players commit fouls and arguing with the ref when they know it was an obvious foul. In his case, I believe he was uh, complaining about a foul that when I watched the play, it just really wasn't a foul. When I look at the other day, Kevin Durant and LeBron went, those was obvious fouls. Those those was easy ones. Very easy to call ones. I looked at two Draymond, Draymond Green got what, two technicals the other day in like a minute. Man got ejected. Because he's arguing with the ref. If you go back and look at those plays, those are the most obvious fouls. I thought that Draymond jumped in the air purposely to foul him. I was like, okay, Draymond is trying to stop this guy by fouling him. So for him to argue with the ref didn't even make no sense. Like, you know you fouled him. We know you fouled him. Come on. And by the way, we got to leave Draymond's, uh, his ball kicks and his, his nut shots. We need to leave that in 2017, too. And I ain't trying to be mean. And uh, I got another favor I want to ask. Can we tell Conor McGregor to not think that he could beat Floyd Mayweather in 2018? We don't need that again. We saw it. It was terrible. Terrible on one side. It looked like the easiest fight that Floyd Mayweather has ever had. Period. I mean, that was the easy. Come on, man. That was somebody sending me something saying they want to talk about something else. I, well, okay. I wasn't going to talk about this. But this did happen right here. And as y'all y'all probably don't know, but we located in Tampa. Uh, I hate to really go there with this, but I gotta go there with this. So last week, around that Christmas time frame, a truck hit a tree at International Plaza, you know, out in West Shore. Come to find out, it's Deshaun, Desh, uh, who is it, a uh, dude that played for the Bucks, Deshaun Jackson. Great receiver, highly talented. In this truck, they find guns, ammo, marijuana, all kinds of debauchery. They probably found two little people. They probably found 75 uh, hemp-made lamps. They probably, who knows what they found. They might have found Prince's last album. God bless R.I.P. to the legendary Prince. I'm just saying they found all kind of random shit in this truck. The thing about the whole situation is they gonna know it's your truck. So what makes you think that ramming it into a tree at them all and leaving it there? It's going to help you get away with whatever you was trying to get away with. Probably DUI or something like that. I don't know these things to be facts. I don't know that he did anything. It's entirely possible that he wasn't driving the truck at all. It still looks bad. The key here is... How the hell you crash your truck into a tree at the damn mall? 
Come on, man. A tree? How do you crash your truck into a tree in a mall parking lot? I ain't never heard no shit like that before. If y'all got an idea on how it could happen or you know anybody who these things have happened to, you let me know. Because that's some different type of stuff. Another thing I've been seeing lately is this argument over whether the NBA is more popular than football. I think it's a weird argument if you go by ratings. You can't say that because the NFL day to day has crazy high ratings. The ratings are crazy high. But at the same time, across the world, is the NFL actually popular? Meaning once you leave the United States, do people care about the NFL? And the short answer to that is not really. If, if you bring it there, they've heard of it. So you get games where 80,000 people come out in London to watch it once a year. But would they have the wherewithal to, uh, if you had a team in London, to come every Sunday or Wednesday or Thursday? I, I don't think so. I, don't th I think the NFL is waning in popularity. But I think you can't compare it to the NBA because the NBA is in a different space right now. Number one, they've handled nearly every situation better than the NFL. Uh, just from the, from the jump, players' rules, when players get in trouble, the NBA seems to have a bit more uh, clarity on what's wrong, what's right. And they, you know, especially ever since the uh, Iverson days, unfortunately, where they basically started regulating how brothers dress. You dress like a thug, AKA N-word is really what that means. But the NBA at that time set rules in place so there wouldn't be this lack of this disparity and lack of clarity that you have, where you have Ben Roethlisberger not getting in any trouble at all, and then you have Tom Brady who did what I consider to be what appeared to be extremely egregious. I mean, he messed with the equipment. To me, that's that ain't just regular cheating; that's super cheating. But he didn't get in as much trouble with me at all after the appeal. Whereas Zeke, on the other hand, in this case, this time, supposedly, it appears that he didn't do it. But because of his history, he's catching hell because of his history, basically. So he ended up with a six-game suspension that he probably deserved previously, but not just yet. So that type of imbalance and punishment, the disparities, comes from the fact that the NFL hadn't set clear policy. It's the same thing that the that the uh, national anthem debate comes from. Is the fact that the NFL really had no specific policy. <clears throat> if I recall, as I you know take a beer, I, I remember uh, there was a player in the NBA a few years back. Like when I say a few years, I don't mean like two. I mean like when I was young, you know, 10, 15 years back, they had already had this debate with the NBA. Uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but he was a Muslim. And so it was already decided, settled, and the NBA made clarity. You, if you're out there, you're going to stand. Of course, nobody can make you go out there. They can put it in your contract, and you can just take the fine, which I believe that this player was doing. I think his name was uh, Sharif. I don't want to get the guy's name wrong. But the NBA has a lot more clarity than the NFL when it comes to these things, and they don't react so crazy when players are just doing regular stuff. Like when, uh, if you go back to when LeBron wore the hoodie and when they wore the I Can't Breathe shirts, the NBA didn't react to it and wild out. Like the NFL, when you do something, they're like, oh my God, I can't believe you did that. You're supposed to do this, get them in line. All that stuff, a lot of that came from uh, Trump. I was gonna say President Trump, but okay, President Trump, y'all president came out and made that more than what it is. And the guy's name now that I, uh, look at, I had to look it up. It's uh, Abdul Rauf. I remember that because that was a big deal at the time. It's just the NBA had already settled it and the NFL hadn't came to that controversy quite yet. Uh, that's just life, really. I mean, the NFL is the NFL. All kind of wild stuff is happening all the time. The NBA is a little bit more calm when it comes to its stars. Think about it. How many, how much trouble do NBA stars really get into? Have we seen like the type of, uh, vibe, like the wild stuff, you know what I mean? Both sports are great and I love all these athletes. I'm glad them brothers is getting their money. But I thought about this the other day as I was discussing it with my brother. You can't name, like, look how big OJ was. 
That was the biggest name in football back in the day at that time. He was like the Jordan of football almost. He was a hero. So for him to catch the type of double murder, mass murder charge he caught was, was crazy. It would have been the equivalent of LeBron catching that. But what do we see with NBA stars? Like Jordan got in trouble, but it was gambling. It was small stuff. Barkley might get in there. I mean, Barkley. <laughs> he, he, he get into a fight here and there, throw somebody through a bar window, get it. But it was never like serial murder. It wasn't nothing like that. And you don't, you see LeBron is clean cut. It's almost like, does this guy do anything? So I'm just saying, it seems to be a different culture within the NFL versus the NBA, where a little bit more seems to slide. People can attribute that to just the nature of the sport or they can also attribute it to CTE period because at the end of the day these gentlemen are just human they just people so how angry can you get at people who make a mistake you get very angry when they hurt somebody else but at the same time you can't not address the underlying issues that may be causing them to act that way I also notice a lot less moms allowing their dads allowing their kids to play football. My question for 2018 is really who's who, who's going to be who, especially for the NBA. We can cut. I'll tell you what argument we can cut right now. We can cut that Kevin Durant versus LeBron James argument. I know everybody wants to have it. Okay. How? How are we having an argument of people who appear to me they came in the NBA at different times. They're not even necessarily from the same NBA generation. You know what I'm saying? They was drafted years apart. Uh, it wasn't considered that, uh, we didn't even consider Kevin Durant as LeBron's peer until recently. And this is uh, what I consider to be, although I will say LeBron's the greatest, one of the greatest of all time, this appears to me to be maybe the down, kind of a down slope. Like, he's going to retire at some point. At some point. And I think some point within the next three to four years, but at the same time, who knows, man. Man, is amazing. If you look at what he's done this year, at the age that he is, I mean, it's bananas. You look at last year playing the most minutes. It's crazy, but I believe, if I'm not mistaken, LeBron was drafted in 03. Kevin Durant drafted in 2007. So we compare people from two different draft classes. We comparing people with two different paths. We would like to compare the Miami trade where LeBron went to Miami and won rings to the Golden State Warriors one. But it's a hard compare. It's not a real comparison. It's not the same. The reason why it's not the same is because in Cleveland the year before, LeBron did not play the Miami Heat in the Eastern Conference Finals and lose to them. And that Miami Heat was on the downturn. They weren't a 73 and 9 team. So with Kevin, it looks different when you leave uh, Russell Westbrook, who's obviously one of the greatest point guards ever. We can just say that now, point blank, period. When you leave him, to go to the team that he fought in his mind, he probably, you know, they fall hard together. They went hard together as a squad. And you leave him there to go to the team that put y'all out. That's what made it look bad. You probably could have traded to Phoenix, to Portland, or anywhere. And I don't think it would have looked like it looked. I don't think people would have felt the way they felt. We're just wondering if he has the, what's the impact? We just wondering, you know, saying what's the impact? What's really the Kevin Durant impact?